let us all that we can to build a better future. As we are all aware, Russell Brand recently um, had his YouTube channel, all of his YouTube channels, demonetized. Um, YouTube, in a knee-jerk reaction, uh, following the internet mob, decided to demonetize his account, even though, again, uh, the women who have come forward, these are accusations. Due process must take place. However, I guess in this era now, we are I guess we're seeing an attempt to rebuild the Me Too Time's Up movement. And if we all remember the Me Too Time's Up movement and its originality, uh, it was supposed to help out women, uh, especially deal with men in positions of power who have abused women. And there are psychopaths who have done that. But Me Too and Time's Up failed to follow through. They failed to help women. And when it came time to hold liberal Democrats accountable, they were nowhere to be seen. And many of those organ and those two organizations, Me Too and Time's Up, eventually went belly up and disappeared. I know. Terrible. And so Russell Brand is being put on the chopping block. Now, I have to say, in my opinion, in my opinion, my opinion alone, I think that this is a hit job against him. Now, again, due process must play out. And if further evidence shows that he was very abusive towards women, then okay, that's coming out there. However, I have two articles, a video and an article that I wish to share with you guys, one from Tara Reid, the other from Glenn Greenwald. And I think it's important that we really acknowledge that something is amiss here, especially with going after Russell Brand, especially now after he's built this very large social media following. And no, it's not a cult. And as a, and one other note that I'd like to bring up here, notice that anyone that goes up against the mainstream neoliberal establishment system, anyone that has a voice or a large following, corporate media is quick to call them fringe, even though no one is tuning in to corporate media. Um, and also, I want to acknowledge a uh, YouTube super chat from Courtney L. Conover, who says the Tar Reed reaction and Amber Heard acceptance destroyed me too. You hit the nail on the head. You hit the nail on the head. So let's get started. I'm going to pull up this article from Tar Reed first. And I think it's important we hear her words. She's been a guest on our show. She's also been a contributor to the Indie News Network. So please check out her work on that platform as well. Uh, again, this is an article written by Tara Reid. And let's go ahead and check it out. Recently, actor, comedian Russell Brand has used his celebrity status and his internet-based show to lift up independent-minded people like U.S. President candidate RFK Jr., he questioned the U.S. NATO involvement in the proxy war against Russia and Ukraine, as well as the mainstream media narrative. I got to be careful with the words. With the pandemic, of course, the establishment neoliberals were having none of it. They turned uh, their laser guided coordinated attacks on Brand, and now he is facing cancellation. Me too style. Here we go again. He's been accused of assault. Got to be careful because you too. But I think we all see it uh, by several women. And as a result, has lost his YouTube ad revenue. One small note. I said this on yesterday's show, and I'll say this during this live stream here as well. If you follow Russell Brand or you believe in independent-minded people, and again, of due process, and again, due process must play out, I encourage everyone to politely, <clears throat> politely, listen to me carefully. If you can't do it, don't. To politely tweet at YouTube to have Russell Brand's account reinstated. I don't like censorship, and this is a knee-jerk reaction. Again, these are accusations, proof and evidence, not internet mob mentality must rule the field. Not the internet mob mentality, proof and evidence, and due process. Simple as that. So if you can, politely retweet at Twitter, on YouTube, tell them to reinstate his account. Has had, has, had, has had his live shows canceled, that's terrible, and has been dropped by his publisher and has had shows featuring him removed from the BBC's video on-demand service, among other things. Me Too started out with a valiant goal as a movement to empower women to speak out about 
abuse, got to be careful, where they had previously felt pressured into silence. All too quickly, it got co-opted by political agendas, becoming a Democrat-backed hashtag used to attack and shut down those who disagree with the establishment narrative. It appears to have faded into relative obscurity since its roaring peak, and this zombie-like return of the style of cancellation comes off as both tiresome and disingenuous. I agree with that. Look, are there bad people? Yes. All right. This isn't a the real world is not a storybook. The real world is not a cartoon. All right. The real world is brutal, harsh and unforgiving. But the way Me Too and Time's Up conducted themselves, it did more disservice to people who have been victims of assault. That goes for women, men and children. Me Too and Time's Up failed the people. Is why I'm against this cancellation of Russell Brand, which is why I believe, in my opinion, my opinion, this is an attack against him because he's telling people to think for themselves as they should. I should know for two reasons. First of all, again, what happened to Tara Reid was unjust. Me too. Time's up. Where were you? Oh, that's right. Nowhere for Tara Reid. I worked for Democrats. Apologies to Tar Reid who wrote this article. You can check it out. I got to be careful with the words because of YouTube's guidelines. I was assaulted by one. I'm sorry. I have to change the words. I'm very sorry. The Democrat I was assaulted by at work is now the president of these United States. There was no investigation into Joe Biden for what he did to me that day, but rather a coordinated attack on me across social media and establishment media like that lasted years. It destroyed my professional and personal life. The Me Too movement was nowhere to be found for me because the founder of Time's Up, the primary organization that supported the movement, was on Biden's payroll. I know. Well done, Me Too and Time's Up. Truth never stood a chance. Even when I came close to testifying before Congress, the DNC machine went full throttle at me. And then there was a part where I had to seek asylum in another country to avoid prosecution or violence. I never expected instant justice, but I never got the justice of even an investigation into him. That being Joe Biden. I know what it's like to have the narrative be locked and loaded by your uh, for your complete destruction. And now so does Russell Brand, which is why I believe Russell Brand. OK, my opinion. If that triggers you, I, I'm i not sorry. In life, you're always going to get triggered. There's always going to be something that's going to get you angry. The facts of his alleged a a a actions are murky, and many of the accusers are anonymous. To date, no criminal charges, investigation, or civil cases have been filed. YouTube reinstate and remonetize his channels immediately. Just a blurry news program of innuendos latched onto, uh, onto a lapdog Western media. The allegations against him were bought by Channel 4 dispatches in a program called Russell Brand in plain sight. That's a terrible name. And the Times. The allegations include assault and manipulation as the news of the journalistic investigation spread. Two shows uh, dropped their episodes featuring Brand. And in only a few days, the trial by media had instigated its complete cancellations. Cases involving uh, misconduct, uh, especially when they are about someone famous, are always a headline grabber. Russell Brand is being attacked. Simple as that. That said, assault uh, are difficult uh, to publicly discuss. On a psychological level, assault is not about sex but power. On a legal level, the issue that swirls around any allegations of assault is consent. Uh, was there consent or not? It seems like a simple enough question. But when it comes down to arguing legal definitions, it can get much more complicated, especially when you throw things like capacity uh, to consent and withdrawal of consent into the mix. And then there's the political level. <clears throat> the R word, there we go, is a highly politicized issue in the U.S. and the West in general, and no one can politicize it better than the Democrats. When a woman comes forward, her reputation often gets attacked, uh, be it by slut shaming or through allegations of fishing for attention. The Me Too mantra, believe all women, when co-opted by a Democrat political agenda, is applied very selectively and it becomes very easy to dismiss a politically inconvenient accuser by destroying her reputation. The accusations themselves become a tool to deplatform or silence chosen targets. Now, 
Some on social media did show support for Brand. Apart from Brand's fans, this included messages by figures like Elon Musk, Doug Carlson, Andrew Tate. In a world of echo chambers, that is uh, the Western social media environment. None of them is likely to change the mind of the opposite camp, members of which already regard Brand as a controversial at best uh, because of his anti-establishment views, are now primed for an all-out attack on him, which is why I believe this is an attack. Due process must take place. If Russell Brand is innocent, he faces a long road to prove it in a court of law, if it comes to that, but also in the court of public opinion. And in the latter case, Brand's image may never fully recover. So I'm going to say this in three, two, one. I do offer Russell Brand when he does have a chance to come onto our show so we can hear his side of the story in its full entirety. And I think it's important that we hear his perspective and not let social justice warriors cancel him. Okay? I seen all you activists. I remember a lot of you people, you activists, your pink pussy hats, how you said we're gonna be in the streets 24-7 if anything happens to Roe v. Wade. Huh. Where are they? I guess they're nowhere to be seen. Where are they? I wonder, I wonder, where are they? The questions that need to be asked when discussing the allegations against Bran are their curious timing. His alleged misconduct dates back a decade, but came to light soon after he started speaking out against the establishment narrative on Ukraine. And now the same neoliberals Bran has always been critical of are now leading to boosting the charge against him. All that said, if crimes were committed, they must be investigated and brought before a court. But the media, especially media with uh, obvious political bias, is not for that. This kind of trial by media is never accurate and always harmful to the truth. Well said, Tara. I also want to bring up this video from Glenn Greenwald. Let's play it. Let me just make clear what these accusations are. There are four women. All of them acknowledge that they had consensual sex with Russell Brand. There's no allegation that he just, out of nowhere, without knowing who they were, attacked them one night or abducted them or jumped them in an alley. Those are not the nature of the allegations. All four of these women consensually dated Russell Brand, but allege that at some point in the course of that consensual relationship, he engaged in behavior that they had indicated they didn't want him to engage in. One of the cases involves classic rape allegations where one of the women claims that she had had sex with him consensually several times. One night she said, I don't want to do this. I don't want you to do this. And he did it anyway. There's another woman who says she was 16 at the time that she dated Russell Brand for three months. It was in the UK where the age of consent is 16. So there's no suggestion that an adult male having sex with a 16-year-old girl is illegal under British law. But... She now says she retrospectively realizes that this was a form of grooming. She didn't realize it at the time. She says, though, he was emotionally manipulative. And then the other two cases are essentially ones of just being controlling, being emotionally uh, and sexually aggressive. But the one case of rape, of kind of rape in the sense that the woman said, I don't want to do this after having consensually had sex with him, is where this rape is coming from. And as usual, what ends up happening is these things end up getting conflated on purpose. Remember, the rape charges against Julian Assange were actually brought by two women who he was dating simultaneously, unbeknownst to the other, he was dating each. And they were engaged in a consensual sexual relationship with him. And their allegation, which emerged after the 2010 publication of the Iraq and Afghanistan war logs, was that they had requested that Julian Assange always use a condom when having sex with them, but that on at least a couple of occasions, he had sex with them without using a condom, something they realized afterwards. And once they ended up speaking to one another and realized that he was cheating on each of them with the other, they both went to the police department to file a complaint. And under Swedish law, it is considered rape to have sex with somebody and not use a condom. And that's where this idea that Julian Assange is a rapist came from. Again, I don't care about Julian Assange's past, okay? I am very concerned 
of what can happen to him if he's extradited to the United States and what this does for the bigger picture for free speech. See, I want to look at the bigger picture, okay? And all these accusations surrounding Julian are god-awful. And if he's extradited, a little bit off topic here, but you know, this platform, I don't care where you stand on the political spectrum. I know I got a diverse audience. Folks, we know firsthand what it's like to have the jackboot of censorship on our necks. Well, that happens if he comes here, not to over-exaggerate, not to cause a little bit of panic, but uh, that jackboot's going to then curb stomp us, okay? Right in the face. And then that's it. Ain't nobody going to be speaking, okay? This is, what, this, this is what I mean. Everyone's so quick to cancel, 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 censor, censor, censor. You're playing right into the manipulation and, and, and into the arena that is controlled by the neoliberal establishment, okay? They want you to not think critically. So that's the basic breakdown. Here's the sort of thing that Channel 4 did. They actually, at least in one of the cases, had an actor portraying the victim uh, in order to protect her identity. I phoned and somebody asked what it was regarding, and I said, that's regarding Russell Brand being a sex offender. Let me just stop that right there. Look at what's on that screen here. The allegations include rape, sexual assault, and controlling an emotionally abusive behavior. If the allegation is that Russell Brand raped a woman and sexually assaulted a woman, why add on to that this much more ambiguous uh, phrase, emotionally controlling behavior? That's the kind of accusation that ended up at the immediate height of Me Too, destroying a lot of people's reputations and careers. It was always very vague. It didn't really involve allegations beyond things like the person was possessive or uh, manipulative. I just want to pause here. We're halfway through this video, and I want to play it in its full entirety. Now, look, Glenn Greenwald is giving a perfect analysis. There's a couple other follow-up videos uh, on his Twitter account as well that you should check out, as well as on his main show. So please support Glenn Greenwald. He is an award-winning journalist, and has done phenomenal work. He's giving a very good breakdown. Now, I've shared with you my opinion. Now, again, I don't want my emotions or any of our emotions to get the better of us, but we've seen this play before. Due process and a trial must take place. Internet mob mentality cannot rule the land. And I know there's a lot of SJWs and liberals that don't like Brand. I get it. He's more popular than you, and the only thing you got to do is, well, sit in your room or go to your little coffee shop and be upset about the world because you're angry and bitter at yourself. This... Looks like a coordinated hit. And just a side note, too, other women were reached out by the same media outlet. And their stories didn't fall in line with the narrative of, oh, Russell Brand is a manipulator and abuser. Some of the other women were saying, oh, no, we, we, had, we, had, we had a cordial relationship. It was a one-time thing. He was a nice guy. Eh, nothing really happened. You going to talk to them or no? Media. Hey, media. CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, BBC, Channel 4. You're the good guys, right? I I'm the anti-hero, of course, but you guys are the good guys, right? New York Times, BBC, CNN, MSNBC, social justice warriors. You're, you're the heroes. You're going to have the same kind of emotional pushback and energy towards that little book of all the names, first name Jeffrey, last name E. You going to look into that anytime soon? Yeah, probably not. Probably not. Something that happens in many relationships, it just seems very odd to have these incredibly grave crimes like rape and then just tacked onto that the category of controlling an emotionally abusive behavior. And I think one of the reasons for that is because the idea of how this got conflated is by saying, oh, we have four women who are accusers, make it seem like all four of them accused him of rape. 
when that's not the case. I believe two of them in particular, their allegations are that he was controlling and engaged in emotionally abusive behavior, which is universes away from rape. And yet you see, you want to kind of call this reckless, this sort of conflation, but I think it's quite deliberate. He's grabbing at my my underwear, pulling it to the side. I'm telling him to get off me, and he won't get off. Like, holding me up against the wall, pushing himself in me. I like how they're putting in that dramatic music. Oh, Russell Brand, the greatest evil of our time. Oh, heaven forbid. Now look, again, due process. Is this going to court? Is it going to be a trial? Channel 4? What about the other women? Hmm? Are their stories going to count? Especially ones that don't fit this spooky narrative of woogie, boogie, boogie, here's Russell Brand. This is a this is this this is a coordinated attack against him. And of course, it's just my opinion. My opinion. Just want to share that out there. He grabbed me and got me on the bed. I was fully clothed and he was naked at this point. And he held me down and he was just aggressively trying to, you know, me. I was like, oh my God, he raped me. I have to say, you know, I find this kind of this use of theatrical devices like the camera angles and the sinister music thank you to be deeply inappropriate yes thank you if you're trying to actually present a news story that's trying to be fair about whether these accusations are true this is cinematic manipulation we all know it if you go to a horror movie the music is crucial to raising your level of suspense and fear. This is supposed to be a news story. When, when, because I did check out this Channel Four Dispatch, you know, went went out to, to to check it. Not 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 to be rude or anything, you know. Don't get it twisted, but I was kind of rolling my eyes listening to that. Like, oh, come on, you meant boom, 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 like making all the suspenseful music about Russell Brand. I'm like, get the hell out of here! And they have an actress recanting the tale of what one of these accusers went through. Like, look, you're making a very serious accusation against somebody here, okay? Now, Russell Brand is not the prime minister of Great Britain. He's not the president of the United States. He is not the premier of Russia, okay? He is not the Pope of Rome, not the king of England. He's a guy who runs a YouTube channel. He's a comedian, actor, all that kind of stuff. But guess what? You're going to have to come forward and people are going to have to see your face. People are going to have to hear from you, okay? Russell Brand doesn't have the KGB in his hip back pocket. You're going to have to come forward. None of this hiding behind the shadows. And the only reason why I'm saying this, the only reason why I'm being aggressive about this is because, look, Russell Brand has been calling out the neoliberal establishment system. So, neoliberals, maybe, I don't know, get, your, get the people who are making these accusations to come forward. Show us your face. Tell us who you are. Or maybe is this all one big setup? Like I said, again, this looks like an attack against somebody who really ticked off the establishment and corporate media because, let's face it, corporate media, the talent there, they're pill-popping alcoholics. There. That's the truth of it. With incredibly serious consequences for a lot of different people, the accusers, the accused... Why use these kinds of techniques to manipulate the emotional reaction of the audience if the substance of the news story is as credible and substantive as they're trying to present it to be? Um, forced his penis down my throat and I couldn't breathe. It was just choking me. I was crying and he said, oh, I only want to see your mascara run anyway. <laughs> Them, them blowjobs where mascara runs a little bit. <laughs> Why'd they put that in there? Huh? Why? It's kind of a funny joke.
I've never ever spoken publicly about this before. Russell seems untouchable. He's not the goddamn king of England. Untouchable? You know, he you don't realize he walked away from Hollywood. And people and of course the media saying that that he saw this coming ahead and Russell Brand's big brain tactic was I'm going to build a cult around me. And that's going to save them. like what? What? Corporate media, you're journalists, right? That's the best you could pull out your wazoo? He was going to do that? Hmm? Okay, fine. You roll with it. You guys said it. Again with the music. God, the music. Let me, let me ask about that as well. So, again, we're talking here about alleged events that took place from 2006 to 2013. The most recent one of which then was a decade ago. And we've all been through the Me Too movement where people far more powerful than Russell Brand were taken down. Harvey Weinstein was probably the most powerful. Hey, is there going to be a kind of investigation into Hunter Biden and, you know, his questionable activities? Because, you know, there's been a lot of reports about who Hunter has been playing around with, especially on that laptop of his. Channel 4, you going to get on that? Huh? Remember corporate media when you said that laptop was fake news? Yeah, I know you journalists. The talent won't do it. MSNBC, CNN. If that offends you, if that triggers, I hope so. I want to live rent-free in people's heads. I'm on my anti-hero arc. And I love it. It's so liberating. I feel so liberated. Powerful figure in Hollywood. wanted to say like the top 10 most powerful people in Hollywood and incredibly famous and popular comedians like Louis C.K. had their careers, I'm not going to say destroyed, but harmed significantly as a result of accusations far less serious than this. So the whole point of the Me Too movement was to create a network, which it did, to enable women to come forward with a support network to be able to accuse powerful, famous, and influential men of engaging in sexual misconduct. The idea that Russell Brand, who is a famous and popular comedian, but he's not anywhere near the level of fame and power that a lot of people have been taken down over the last five and six years. I mean, taken down, like, as in go to prison, fired completely, uh, rendered off limits. And so the idea that I, I do understand that if you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of power, it is and can be intimidating to bring accusations of this kind against somebody who has a very popular following. But the idea that, you know, we're back in 1987, where this sort of thing is impossible to do, or Russell Brand is some kind of immense giant, I think that the fact that there was a 10 to 15 year wait between the alleged incidents and the time that people came forward, even assuming the best of motives. And again, listen to these words here, because a lot can happen between 15 years and now people can get jealous or very petty. Why am I bringing that up here first? Because again, Russ, again, Glenn Greenwald is going to be more on point because people's memories uh, do fade over time. But the reason why I bring up petty and jealous jealousy is because, look, Russell Brand has been very upfront about his addictions and his problems, okay? Hollywood can do that to a person. And since then, he's changed his life around. He's a father, too, and a third kid on the way. Good for him. Seriously, I do mean that. You found, you found true love in this crazy world, Russell. May you and your family be happy for forever. I truly do wish that. Some people would look at that and be envious, including maybe some of these girls that he used to date. Okay, people can be jealous. People can be envious and maybe be motivated to ruin somebody and hurt them. See, again, it's just a speculation. But human nature. And people's memories of the past can fade, might not be reliable. 
I mean, I remember doing a lot of field work back in the day when we started in 2017 with Hard Lens Media. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, stories we report on. But, you know, if I were to recant it, I have to look back at those videos because I can't use my memory on it. Even going back years from now, there's some stuff that I, I may not fully remember. None of us are perfect. Our memories do fade. We do forget things. That's why there's statute of limitations on crimes. The main reason is, is because people's memories fade over time. They become unreliable with each passing year. And so I absolutely think it's a legitimate question to ask, even though there are valid answers, why it is that if these things all took place in the way that it's being portrayed, why it is that it took so long for these accusations to emerge. And you see here these media outlets doing anything but trying to create a fair picture of the story. Charlie Brown politics in the live stream chat. It's also possible that the ladies were broke as hell, bribery, blackmail. Nothing is off the table. Hey, okay. I'm not going to argue. Like I said, I, 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 in my opinion, this looks like an attack because he ticked off the establishment media and people in positions of power. Hey, CNN, MSNBC, I know you're never going to report on the, uh, little black book of Jeffrey E. I know you won't do it. I know you won't do it. I remember when James O'Keefe posted that video of ABC. That's right. Owned by Disney. <gasps> well, you guys knew about it. Well, you knew about the client list, but uh, you got a phone call because uh turns out one of the Royal families of great Britain Prince Harry's uh, creepy uncle was on that little list, right? And you guys had to have access to start, to speak to Harry and Kate, right? You dropped that story. I think a lot of people forget that James O'Keefe uh, leaked that video out there. So corporate media, you knew. You knew. You had the interviews. You had it all. I know you people won't do it, ABC, CNN, MSNBC, New York Times. I know you don't. You don't have what it takes because you need to have access to all those rich politicians and people in power. You won't do it. It's okay. You're cowards. It's fine to admit that. Be liberated. We got five years left until AI takes over. It's okay to admit who you are. Be strong. They are obviously acting in a prosecutorial way. With the music and the the, the 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 camera angles and everything designed to have this be something that is not a serious news bit of news reporting at all, but is a theatrical production to convict somebody in the media who they dislike ideologically. Precisely. I want to pull up one last video here. Just one more. One more, uh, one more video from Glenn Greenwald. Again, please be sure to check out his full reporting on System Update. It's on Rumble. He also has a Twitter account, System Update. Also, you can follow Glenn Greenwald on Twitter as well. He's done phenomenal work, award-winning journalist, and he's done, again, breaking stories. My opinion still stands just to upset the liberals. I believe Russell Brand. Is he perfect? No, he's not. But I like how he tells people to think for themselves, as they should. And I hope that offends some brain-dead liberal. I said it. And I don't apologize. Now, I will say, there is this kind of counter-narrative that I'm also reluctant to jump on board with, which is the idea that because of Russell Brand's political perspective— and his strong critiques of establishment centers of power and their orthodoxies, that this is nothing more than a kind of plot on the part of powerful people to take down a influential critic. And I'm unwilling to jump on that bandwagon for the same reason I'm unwilling to assume the evidence or the accusations here true, which is there's not yet evidence for that. Maybe there will be. But what I will say is... This is the sort of thing that is done to people who become influential establishment critics. I'll tell you a story that really stuck with me. 
when I was a child, one of my childhood heroes was Dan Yellsberg. I've talked about this before. I wrote an article in Rolling Stone when Dan Yellsberg passed away two or three months ago. And I was always obsessed with the Pentagon Papers in my childhood. I read everything I could and got my hands on it. I thought it was this incredibly fascinating story that this person very high up inside the U.S. government who had been trained for all sorts of security clearances to be one of the most influential and powerful people in Cold War U.S. security state policymaking turned on the very establishment that had given him all of his credentials and power because he realized the government was systematically lying to the country about the Vietnam War, conscripting Americans to go fight and die in the jungles of Vietnam in a war that the United States, uh, that the that American elites who were making these decisions knew they couldn't win. And as a result, he risked his liberty to take these documents that were top secret that proved the government was lying and give them to the media, much like Edward Snowden did. Now, again, listen very carefully what they did to this man. Now, again, again, in this day and age, should he have done that, uh, the, the media would have ratted him out to the establishment and he'd be hauled off to jail. Remember, if you're a whistleblower, you're the bad guy. Now, if you're a corrupt individual committing crimes, doing corporate espionage, you know, doing corporate insider trading, you know, all that kind of stuff. Or if you're a politician who's abused your position of power, you get a little slap on the wrist. But if you call it out in the land free of justice, you're the bad guy. Again, there's a reason why I'm on my anti-hero arc. Because your heroes are not heroes. 30 or 40 years later, which is why Ellsberg said he considers Snowden a hero. But one of the things that I can never understand, I don't just mean childhood, but even in, into to my adulthood, was the response of the Nixon administration when Ellsberg leaked these documents was to break into the office of Danny Ellsberg's psychoanalyst in order to discover his psychosexual secrets so that they could leak them to the media and discredit Ellsberg. And the reason I didn't understand that in, in my naivete was it was a gigantic non sequitur. Here's evidence proving the U.S. government systematically lied to the American people about the Vietnam War. Oh, well, here's evidence showing that Danny Ellsberg has bizarre fetishes and sexual fantasies. And again, that is his own personal information that he shared with the therapist. Again, uh, the fact that you had a presidential administration do that um, really just call into question just how many other presidents committed those same kind of crimes or go after their enemies. Again, we're supposed to, we're not a democracy, we're a republic, right? But in a republic, we expect that there's checks and balances, accountability, I, I keep saying this on the show. Look, it's easy to view somebody like Trump as the villain, but see, he's not the bad guy. There are politicians who are far more vile and devious than Trump, okay? Far more brutal than Trump, far more cunning and sinister than Trump. I know I'm saying controversial things. That means I'm talking about your favorite liberal Democrat. Yeah, because they're not good people. They're not. Sometimes the greatest evil hides in the light. You think I'm joking, but I'm not. And a wild sexual life. Why would one have anything to do with the other? I wondered in my naivete. And then as I began understanding better how these events work, I came to realize that this is often a tactic to discredit people that you want to discredit. Sexual scandals are the thing that people love to wallow in. They pay attention to them. They make somebody radioactive. It's the same that was done with Julian Assange. I'm not suggesting, again, that these cases are identical. I'm simply saying that it is not some bizarre conspiracy theory that when you want to go and discredit somebody because they have a politically influential platform spreading an ideology you find menacing, one of the favorite ways to do that is to dig into somebody's sexual past and reveal things about what they did in their private life. It's one of the most effective ways. People love sex scandals. They're easy to understand. And eventually you make they make people just want to turn away from the person that they've... 
And that's why I'm going to double down on my support for Russell Brand because he, again, wrote a book on recovery. I saw that from Kurt Boss in our live stream chat. He has been open about his recovery. He's been open about his addiction. So, yeah, look, is Russell Brand perfect? No. But I don't like these attacks and the ominous music and the cinematic tale of, oh, no, Russell Brand, the great tyrant of our times. Heaven forbid. I believe Russell Brand. Okay? That's just my opinion. My opinion. If that triggers you, good. 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 Link them to. And again, there are cases where this was done and it turned out to be evidence-free. Matt Gates is one of them. And there are a lot of other ones as well. So it's easy to mock, oh, Russell Brand got too close to the truth and the establishment decided they were going to concoct or fabricate accusations against him. It doesn't have to be that primitive. Again, this is a concerted effort on the part of media outlets to go searching for these kinds of allegations. And they found one or two women willing to make rape allegations from many years before, conflated them with two or three other women to make it seem like he has been accused of serial rape. And again, this is something that he vehemently denies. And anybody who purports to know the truth other than Russell Brand and these women are either extremely ignorant or extremely dishonest. Again, shout out to the article written by Tara Reid and this report by Glenn Greenwald. Now, look, for all of you watching, due process must take place. If this is going to court, then let this get go to court. Let the evidence be out there, okay? But there's a lot of things that don't add up. The time frame, the weight, this view and presentation that somehow Russell Brand is untouchable, even though he has been uh, a huge critic of the establishment. A lot of things are rolling in my mind. Now, if I said this at the height of Me Too or Time's Up, I know I'd be put on the chopping block. But knowing that Me Too and Time's Up were both hypocritical organizations that didn't help women, and they didn't, that they were co-opted by the Democratic Party, which they were, this is a fact, I have to question these accusations. Now, again, due process must take place, and I shared my opinion. I stand with Russell Brand. Because he's been telling people to think for themselves. So in the off chance, one of Russell Brand's viewers or any of you are watching this, share this with his community. There are 6.6 million of you wonderful awakening people, right? That's what he says to you, right? Whatever happens, it is your social responsibility to keep on speaking truth to power. And remember the lessons that he shared with you in order to fight back, to think critically and think for yourselves. That's what I'm going to tell you, my audience, to think critically and think for yourselves because the establishment will do everything they can to silence somebody that's breaking their narrative. Tell me, do you really trust the system? Do you trust the media after all the years that they've been lying to us, manipulating us, keeping us divided? How many stories have they retracted in their time? How many politicians have been revealed to be scumbags and far more vile than Russell Brand? I think we've lost count now. So in other words, all you awakening lovely people, keep up the fight. Not only for yourselves, but for the next generation to come. So that we can still be pushing back at these bastards who want to tell us what to think and how to feel. We don't owe them the satisfaction of surrendering. We keep on pushing back. And that's why I stand by Russell Brand. Because he's telling people to think for themselves, as they should, and as you should as well.